Good morning, Wesley. It is so glad for you to join us again this Sunday morning as we gather to celebrate Mother's Day here at Wesley United Methodist Church in downtown Columbia, South Carolina. I bring you greetings on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Tiffany Nolan Balkin, and the family of Wesley United Methodist Church this morning. Uh, this is a day of celebration for us as well because this is our pastor's uh, first Mother's Day, and we celebrate that with you and Kareem and Caleb, and we pray that you will enjoy this day that God has given you and gift you uh, with this great gift of Caleb and Kareem in your life. Thank you, Pastor, for always being so gracious and allowing us to help when uh, we're able. And so this is a gift to you on this your first Mother's Day celebration. Uh, and so we are so glad that you have joined us this day. I want us to continue to be in prayer um, for our healthcare workers and all those who are on the front lines continuing to fight this pandemic on our behalf. We pray God's blessings upon them and the work that they're doing as they stand on the front lines uh, trying to protect us and keep us safe. So let us pause for a word of prayer and then we will share uh, for a few moments. Holy God, we pause again to say thank you, God, for this day. We pause and say thank you, God, for all the, the mothers and, and all those, Father God, you have given us who have been mother figures to us throughout our lives. We thank you for grandmothers. We thank you for our aunties and, and even those, Father God, who who lived in our communities, who, who shepherd us and care for us, nurtured us. And we pray, God, for this great gift that you have given to us. And Lord God, we continue to lift up um, the frontline workers, our doctors and caregivers and our first responders. We pray, Lord God, for our leaders throughout the world, especially in the United States and our state. And we pray, Lord God, that you will just have your way with us now. Bless this word that I will share. And I pray now, Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be found acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. On, on this day, I want to share uh, with us from 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 through 5. I will be reading from the personal evangelism uh, of the New Testament um, version of the text. Hear these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, into an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorrupted, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who being protected by God's power through faith for the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. The, the first verse, it says, the third verse, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A new birth into a living hope. A new birth into a living hope. My friends, all of us, as we celebrate Mother's Day, uh, we celebrate because there was a new birth when we came into the world. And those of us who have responded to the call of God through the word of God, through the preaching and the teaching and the witnessing of those down through the years, those who have responded to the great gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ, there's also been a second birth, a birth into a living hope. And so Peter uh, writes this letter uh, to the churches that has been dispersed and found themselves isolated, fearing appraisal from the Roman government on their lives. Churches that had been scattered because Nero, the Roman emperor, had set fire to the city, and but yet he um, used the Christians uh, as a scapegoat. 
And so they were running for their lives. They were living in isolation. They, they were, quote unquote, sheltering in place, if you would, because of the persecution of the Christian uh, community. And so Peter begins to write this letter uh, to them to uh, give them a sense of hope in the midst of their struggles. And I know that many of us are continuing to go through this pandemic and struggling with isolation fatigue. And, and, and I hope that we are sharing a good word with our neighbors and our families and our friends. And so I want to encourage us this morning that as we look at this letter from Peter, I'm quite sure that Peter understood how many of them probably felt emotionally, spiritually, and probably physically tired and fatigued. The strain of that kind of isolation that may put on many people like many of us may be feeling uh, at this moment. Peter understood what it felt like to have so much hope and yet in one day things change for a lifetime, it appears. He understood what it meant to be loved and nurtured and yet one, one day changed everything uh, in Peter's life. One day when he was feeling like he was on top of the world and within one night, here was Peter groping in darkness, trying to find his way. I'm talking about the same Peter who walked with Jesus for three years before he was crucified. The same Peter who doubted the Lord's power when Christ told him, when he first called him, to launch out into the deep water for a catch. Peter, who had been fishing all night long, but yet he had caught nothing, but yet the Lord was calling him to a new mission. And as Peter followed him, Peter was the one who had witnessed all the love and the grace of God that was found in Jesus Christ. He had been with Jesus Christ when he had fed the multitude with two fish and five loaves. He had been there with Jesus when he opened blind eyes. He was there when he helped the lame to walk. He was there when those who thought that Lazarus was too far gone, four days dead. He was there when Christ raised Lazarus from the dead. He had been to the mountaintop with Christ. He had been down through the valley, even the valley of the Garden of Gethsemane. He was there with Christ. And even in the garden, Peter was one who was ready to fight the battle for Christ. For he had drawn his sword and cut off one of the guard's ears. But yet Christ reminded him, put that away. But just that earlier in the evening, early in the evening, he was also there when they had the Last Supper. And as Luke tells it, it says that Christ told Peter during the Last Supper, Satan has requested to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And when you return to me, strengthen the brethren also. So I'm quite sure that as Peter is writing this letter, he's recall, recalling all that he had experienced with Christ. He's probably also recording the dark days and the dark nights of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm quite sure that many of us have experienced some dark days and dark nights in these last six weeks that we've gone through this pandemic. But I want to encourage us this morning that as we celebrate this great gift that God has given us, a Mother's Day and new birth into our lives, into our physical existence, I want to encourage us to know that there is also new birth in the spiritual as well. And so Peter he writes this letter to these churches there in Asia Minor. He writes this letter to remind them that there is still hope. And yet, as I read this text, it appears that uh, the Apostle Peter is singing praises to God. For he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, according to the abundant mercy of God. God has given us new birth into a living hope, into a living hope. 
through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. God has given us a living hope, given us a confidence that no matter what may come our way, no matter what darkness we may face in our lives, no matter how dark the day nor the dark night, that God has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And I'm quite sure that as Peter is sharing this, he's thinking about Friday of the crucifixion, how he had wanted to stay close to Christ, and yet he had denied his Savior. I'm quite sure that as he's writing this, those three dark nights that he faced, but yet on that Sunday morning, Mary comes and brings this good news that he lives. And finally, when he meets Christ himself, and Christ reminded him by asking three questions, Simon, do you love me? Do you love me? Not only did Christ reassure him, he gave him a new assignment. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And I'm quite sure that as he's writing this letter and realizing how blessed he is through the resurrection of Christ, that God gave him a new birth, a new lease on life. And God has the same offer for us as well. That though we may be going through this time of uncertainty, God is certain, for the scripture reminds us that God is the same today and forever the same God of yesterday. And because of the assurance we have through the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that God is always there for us, we're called to walk by faith and not by sight. And so I can see Peter and all the excitement that he is sharing in this letter this morning because God had given him a new birth as well as a living hope. This new birth had given him a new lease on life, resurrection hope, a living hope. For as he said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who God gave according to his mercy, gave us new birth. According to God's great mercy, He's offering the same to us. He's offering to us a new life, a living hope through the great mercies of God. Not just any kind of mercy, but God's tender mercy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life the God who gave his son, Jesus Christ, that while we were still yet sinners, he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, that we may have this second birth, this second life of a living hope. For as the Holy Spirit and the word of God transforms our lives, God transformed not only our lives, but our minds that we may be able to discern what is the good and perfect will of God. And Peter writes this letter to encourage them that this living hope is something that God has given to us as a gift of life, the life eternal in Jesus the Christ. He's singing of God's grace. Oh, as the songwriter will say, the streams of mercy flowing from the throne of God's grace. And so as we celebrate Mother's Day in 2020, remember not only mama, but remember that God's grace is still sufficient for us. And because Peter learned to trust in Jesus, because he learned to trust in God, he learned to depend and trust on God's word. And so Peter shares with them that not only has God given them new birth, but a living hope, a hope that continues to live even while we are going through 
these uncertain times, a love that God showed to all of us. For as he said through Jesus Christ in John 3 and 17, that Christ came not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And so my friends, as we celebrate this day, the birth of our lives to our mothers and our fathers and our families, let us also celebrate a new birth and a living hope that God has granted us through his son, Jesus Christ. And so join me as we continue to praise God for new birth and a living hope Hope where our souls are anchored in the Lord. Hope that makes life worth living day by day. A living hope that brightens the path of our lives even as we walk through the dark. And as the psalmist says, even though we are walking through the valley of the shadows of death, we have nothing to fear because God is with us and that God's rod and God's staff shall give us comfort. Praise God with me as God gives us a living hope that gives us faith to trust God because greater is Christ that lives in us than he that lives in the world. I praise God with Peter this morning for the new birth of my own personal life and the life of the church of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So as Peter declared, bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to abundant mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. To all the mothers, God bless you. And as you celebrate the birth of your children and celebrate the new birth that God has offered to all of us the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all the people of God said, Amen. Have a great day and a great week. And now may the love and the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may us rest and rule and abide now and forever. Amen and amen. Take good care.